Hello everyone. Welcome to another video in the Prosto lecture series. Today, we will be trying to differentiate and understand the terms centric relation, centric occlusion and maximum intercuspation. I know these terms can be slightly confusing and little difficult to begin with, but I hope at the end of this video, we will be able to understand these three terms with respect to complete dentures, natural dentition and the confusion regarding these three terms will be eradicated. When we have to go through these terms, it is better we go through them as centric relation first, then understand centric occlusion and then finally move on to maximum intercuspation. It is said so because centric relation has been in existence for more than 100 years and there are almost 26 definitions proposed for centric relation alone. So this being the most confusing concept, if we are able to understand centric relation, then maximum intercuspation and centric occlusion should be a piece of cake. So first moving on to centric relation. To understand centric relation, take a look at this picture. The picture show, shows a circle at the condyle and its glenoid fossa, indicating that centric relation is a bone to bone relationship. It means that we are not bothered about the teeth or its position when we speak about centric relation. The teeth are completely eliminated and all we are focused on while speaking about centric relation is the condyle and its position in the glenoid fossa. So when we look at the condyle and its position in the glenoid fossa, the condyles are going to be present against the antero superior position of the posterior slope of articulating eminence. Now when condyles are in this position, mandible is in the most retruded position possible. I repeat again, condyle will be against the antero superior position of the posterior slope of articulating eminence and the mandible will be in the most retruded position thus giving the classic definition of centric relation. Let's move on to centric occlusion. To understand centric occlusion, let's take a closer look at this picture. The picture has two circles, one at the bone and other at the teeth, indicating that centric occlusion is the occlusion that is present when the condyles are in centric relation. I repeat, the occlusion that is present when the condyles are in centric relation is called as centric occlusion. So this centric occlusion is going to take both bone and teeth into its consideration. Now where do we see centric occlusion? The most commonly we see centric occlusion in complete dentures. Now moving on to the final concept which is maximum intercuspation. Maximum intercuspation, if you take a look at these pictures, the pictures have emphasized only the teeth. That means maximum intercuspation is independent of bone and is all related to the teeth. So maximum intercuspation is the complete digitation of the maxillary and mandibular teeth. The position at which there is complete digitation where all the teeth occlude are called as maximum intercuspation. So that means it is independent of the bone relationship. So now let's move on to understanding when centric occlusion will be equal to maximum intercuspation. It is an interesting concept and there are only two indications when centric occlusion will be equal to maximum intercuspation. The first indication is that in a completely edentulous patient where there is no MIP, that means the patient does not have any occlusion and when you are rehabilitating this patient and you're going to give a new occlusion for this patient, the occlusion that is being established should be in centric relation, making centric occlusion equal to maximum interdigitation. The second is the most interesting one. Now where this indication comes in patients where there is some amount of occlusion present, but this occlusion is not sufficient for the restoration to survive there. That means the existing MIP is unhealthy and when you're going to give a new occlusion for this patient, the occlusion established will be in centric relation, making centric occlusion equal to MIP. Now, uh, identifying the cases and conditions where CO should be equal to MIP comes with clinical practice. 
So let's come to the last portion and try to understand when CO does not coincide with MIP. It has been said that in almost 95% of the adults in natural dentition, centric occlusion does not coincide with MIP and there is almost 0.5 to 1 mm of discrepancy present between CO and MIP. And also in conditions where we do a restoration for a single tooth using an FPD or an implant, class 1 amalgam or composite restoration or a simple RPD, we are going to give such restoration in the existing occlusion that is healthy to hold the restoration in its place. So in such conditions also, the MIP does not coincide with centric occlusion. So I hope you understood the concepts of CO, CR and MIP. Thank you.